So I, I've been finding myself wanting to shoot outside more and more often these days, I'm trying to get out of the basement a little bit. Unfortunately, it makes my dog go a little bit crazy, but uh, a lot of things have been coming to light for me in the past couple of weeks, uh, really past couple months. And it's the shocking similarities between what's going on in Magic the Gathering uh, how I, how it parallels with uh, a lot of the core issues of Gamergate. And as a game I've played since 1993, 1994, uh, it's, it's sad, but I felt like, as with a lot of things in the gaming industry or comic books, this sort of thing seems to just always happen once, once something gets big enough. And there's a lot of parts to this series that I want to talk about, but instead of making like one two hour long video, I'll try to break it up into bite-sized pieces. And I'm gonna start with today the similarities between Gamergate and the current Magic the Gathering environment. Let's talk about just the journalism aspect, okay? Just the information that us, the players, get um, and its filtration process. There isn't anyone out there who will deny that Wizards of the Coast, a subsidiary of Hasbro, has a internal blacklist. Uh, I'm on it, uh, some former judges are on it, prominent, the number one Magic the Gathering streamer or at one time was, he's on it. There's many people on this blacklist and there's a variety of reasons that they're on it. But what you need to take away from that is, those of us that are on it are known and information gets presented to us from other people who get sour. And it's not always accurate. I've had a lot of scandals, quote unquote, sent to me uh, via email or through DMs <clears throat> over the years about Wizards of the Coast and things going on in their, um, in their corporation that I've just never published or never shared because just, there's no way to prove any of it. And, you know, it was just you know damaging at a personal level for some people that may have been involved and what i want to talk uh or the point i'm trying to make is uh i get a lot of things sent to me because i'm i'm a well-known uh magic youtuber on my other channels and um when people get ostracized when people get booted from the community they often have an axe to grind and they know i have a loud voice and so they tell me things One of the first things I noticed about the community is the way the content is disseminated, the way the news, so to speak, journalism, is done in our community. There's two main groups. There's the people on the outside that write puff pieces that Wizards of the Coast pays for, like Mashable or uh, the Seahawks did some garbage, Gizmodo or whatever, these, these outsiders, right? And then there's the insiders. There's the content creators there's the bloggers, and then there's like the professional pro players who do a lot of the writing. Where do you find a lot of this content? Well, you find it on YouTube, and you find it on blogs. And really, there's like three or four main content creators in the magic world that aren't, for example, YouTubers or podcasters. You have the Star City Games crew, Channel Fireball, these are host a lot of articles and, and also do video podcasts. You have Card Kingdom and you have TCG Player. Okay, these are probably the four biggest uh, non-corporate companies. These are companies that direly depend on Wizards of the Coast. They're also the companies that benefit the most from the game doing well. They benefit from insider information, uh, which may, almost all of them have been suspected of receiving at some point or another, although those sorts of things are hard to hard to peg down, at least uh, until you see some more information that I have. Um, and then you look at the YouTubers, and honestly, like outside of I guess Reddit forums, YouTubers, and then article writers, and, and YouTubers have some of the largest reach. Most of us YouTubers have much further reach than let's say the Magic official subreddit or you know these forums, and. If you look at, let's say, 
Tulare Community College or the Mana Source. These are the two biggest channels by far in the community. Distant Third might be my channel or even MTG Goldfish, it depends. And these are two channels with large Patreons and big corporate sponsors, okay? What you have is at the top you have Wizards of the Coast. They disseminate information to those on the inner circle. Those YouTubers or bloggers or podcasters are that are in the inner circle that are approved. And then you have the companies, Star City Games Channel, Fireball, Card Kingdom, they get information, they pass it down. So most people are getting their information either directly from somebody whose business entirely depends on the success of the game or somebody whose income depends on the, on the success of the game, right? So you have wizards, then you have these companies, this, the mega power sellers, and these power sellers now basically own most of the Magic community. You have Card Kingdom sponsoring several of the large YouTubers, and then you have TCG Player with the other. And it's sh it will shock you how little money it takes to basically um, buy somebody. So you can basically be a channel sponsor in the Magic community for probably 500 to 1,000 bucks. I'm pretty sure that um, other, the large channel out there probably charges maybe a grand or two per month. And you, that's big money for a Magic YouTuber. I think uh, when my channel was doing really good, maybe it was making two to $3,000 a month. Um, and you know, adding a, stacking a grand or two grand on top of that is massive. And I know this because I'm in the community. I see these same offers that my partners get. And what I'm afraid of is the way this system works is that there's, you, there's a well-known blacklist, okay? You don't want to end up on this blacklist because your gravy train goes away, which means as a content producer, you can't upset who's paying you, which might be, in this case, Card Kingdom or TCG Player, because they can't upset Wizards of the Coast, because they depend entirely on a, a relative monopoly on the largest portions of volume and sales, right? So there's a reason you don't see any articles about the judge lawsuit appearing on Star City Games or Channel Fireball, even though it's a, there's a class action lawsuit. Where are the articles and, and um, videos about the other lawsuit with a judge that was settled um, a few years ago. They don't write about these things because it's understood that you don't go against the mothership. And what you end up with is this incestuous relationship where everybody's working together to shill for one common goal. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, that's for themselves, right? It's self-preservation. And so you have this environment right now that's really toxic and a lot like games journalism was, where you would get insider information for being on the good list. Look at what Wizards of the Coast does with their spoilers, right? When a new set comes out, they give the best spoilers to their best behaved kids. This is a fact. It's been going on for years. The more, the better you toe the line, the better spoilers you get. I've seen it happen where YouTubers used to get just commons and uncommons, which I've gotten in the past, to now the YouTubers are getting mythic rarities, the biggest bombs, the biggest things to spoil. And that's all about towing the line. Now, will some people eventually come out, like for example, with the promo situation that went on with Friday Night Magic? We saw some vocal creators come out against that. And that was very interesting to see. But in, in, the most, in most cases, you don't see anybody griping about anything related to Magic the Gathering outside of the generally accepted gripes, like the reserve list or you know uh, availability of product, things like that. But if you go at anything specific with Wizards, you become, you're on the radar. I've had conversations with people that know who I am, that I don't know who they are, and they work at Wizards. And I've had conversations in direct message with them while digging around some of these stories, and they say, yeah, I've seen your Twitter. I've seen you posting about this Gamergate stuff. People I've never talked to before in my life. So phase one 
is the environment. It's like the, the conditions are correct for a thunderstorm where you have high, high humidity, low pressure, high pressure zones, things like that. You have that in the Magic community where any news the players get are from people on the payroll. And there's nobody out there um, outside. Well, there are small channels, but there aren't any loud voices that don't toe the line. And so what we have is a festering situation of insider favors and burying of stories and choosing not to endorse or choosing not to talk about certain things. It's more strategic. But I think after we get through this whole series, which at this point will be something like 10 parts, um, you'll see just how incestuous the Magic the Gathering content creation and news industry really is. And the, the insider favors and the ins how corrupt the judge program is, sex for favors. These are things that have been told to me by several high ranking people of blow your mind. And so stick around. The next thing I'm going to talk about is corruption in the judge program and how insider favors and, and, and things like that yeah, will, it will, it will blow your mind. So stay tuned, boys and girls. This one's going to get messy.